Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Um, in this video today we're going to be talking about esterification, the chemical reaction um, that in which esters are formed from alkanoic acids and alkanols. We're going to talk through some of the conditions that we use um, when we're conduct conducting esterification um, and some of the equipment that we use. We, we carry it out in a particular way and, and talk through some of the reasoning behind that. Okay, so we've introduced in the previous videos that Esterification is a reaction between an alkanoic acid and an alkanol in an equilibrium reaction um, forming an ester plus water. Okay, we've, we've referred that this is, um, so the, the forward reaction, um, so we talk about is, is an esterification. This idea, this process of taking these two components and forming an ester, and, and in doing so, water. We also introduced this idea that it was a type of condensation reaction. Okay, and I'll go through uh, just quickly what we mean by that. Okay, so let's say, uh, flicking back to this particular, um, uh, I'll just cover that up for a second. This particular example that we identified in previous videos. Um, so um, here, so we're, we're saying that we're taking an alkanoic acid and an alkanol and reacting them together so that then they combine to form the ester, or the alkyl alkanoate. Okay, so that is, we've taken two components and we've connected them into one. Okay, and so we call this process condensation, a reaction taking, um, so where we're taking two, um, taking smaller components, so smaller reactants and combining to a bigger product, like physically bigger product, um, and it also involves the removal of a water molecule. So that's kind of con condensing con condensation in two aspects, taking the smaller things and condensing them into one bigger thing, and also perhaps condensation if we're thinking about the formation of water. Okay. So that's that's. There are other condensation reactions that we'll encounter a little later in our, in our course, where we're thinking about um, forming carbohydrates from sugars, and also forming proteins from amino acids. So those who do biology, these two ones are going to um, kind of come to the, get, get to come together quite nicely. We also think about it when we're making things like um, certain types of plastics, or called polymers. And that there are certain types of polymers that involve this kind of reaction. Okay, but so um, one thing that we notice here is that um, that this reaction, as I mentioned before, is an equilibrium. That is, we have one process going forwards to make an ester. What we also have is that we have that this process can carry out in reverse. And so the reverse reaction, the reverse process, we call ester hydrolysis. Okay, so hydro being water, lysis uh, meaning cut. Okay, we've talked about hydrolysis reactions a lot, like taking water and splitting it apart into hydrogen and oxygen gases in the past. Here is taking an ester and by reaction with water that it's breaking apart into its alkanoic acid and alkanol. Okay, now the reason that we care about this, now we don't, we don't go into this reverse reaction in as much detail in our course. But the, the fact that it's an equilibrium at all um, dictates a lot of what comes next when we actually do this. Okay, so I'm going to show you a diagram of the actual equipment that we use. Okay, when we're carrying out um, esterification. Okay, so this equipment is known as um, refluxing apparatus. Okay, so refluxing. So what we have um, is that we've got a number of bits of equipment. Okay, the first one, which should be fairly familiar by now, is we've got a retort stand over here, that we're using to connect up and um, and support this um, this setup of equipment. So what we have over here, you might remember when we've, we've looked at distillation in the past, that this is called a condenser. Okay, so what happens is that we get water going in at the bottom, and we get water going out at the top. Okay, so water is pumped in from the tap at the bottom, fills up the outside layer of this condenser and then leaves through um, through the top. 
we have a, a flask down the bottom here, a round bottom flask specifically, over the top of a Bunsen burner on a tripod. And so then what um, we have inside here is our reaction mixture. So what happens is that the esterification reaction occurs inside this flask and the use of this condenser helps to allow that um, reaction to continue. Okay, so then it begs the question of why do we use this particular setup? What's the purpose of this arrangement? Okay, and so it ultimately it comes back to that comes back to this equilibrium. So when we see that we've got an equilibrium here, that we see that we have a forward reaction, and then after a while, as we're producing an ester, that then the ester can start to break down to reform our reactants. So that means that in order to produce enough ester, we have to um, we have to think about Le Chatelier's principle to guide us. Okay. So the reason that we use refluxing, um, let's write down a few thoughts. Okay. So we need long reaction times. Okay. This reaction is very slow. Okay. And so what that means is that reactants will um, evaporate. So the reactants we say are volatile. That is, will evaporate easily, um, so they will escape the flask very easily, because especially because we're having to heat up the reaction, um, and so we don't want our reactants to escape the flask before any reaction has been able to happen. Okay, so we use refluxing because we need to, um, so it keeps our reactants in the flask. Um, the way that it does that is that it turns any um, any vapors, any kind of any one of that gas, back to liquid, and then um, runs down into flask. Okay, it's the same principle as to why we use this, why we use a condenser in distillation. Except instead of running down into a different flask, it's running back into the same flask. Okay, um, and what we also have is that we have um, toxic. Uh, reactants and or products, depending on the ester that we're making here. Okay, and so that is so we're minimizing um, exposure. You know, we don't want to be breathing in those vapors if we can help it. Okay, and then likewise, also um, because um, these reactants, we're, we're thinking about. Uh, hydrocarbons or you know carbon-based compounds which are often very flammable and so what it does is that not only does it minimize exposure to us breathing in toxic substances but it also um, stops those vapors from escaping and then catching on fire so that's also from a safety point of view okay so we're using refluxing to to help keep our reactants in there um, so that the reaction can continue we also want to keep them in there because they could be toxic and flammable and so from a safety point of view we want to maintain that there okay and so what that also means is that we end up with um, our ester in our reaction mixture you know so if we in if we kind of bring back this diagram so that in the end we start with only our reactants here um, but in the end we get a mixture of reactants and our products and so if we want to isolate our ester we have to try and do a separation at the other end or if we're just looking for a, a qualitative measure that we have um, produced it, you know, like we just want to smell the characteristic odour or something like that, then we can just, um, we can make observations from the flask directly. Okay, now also um, what we do is that thinking about our refluxing, what we also use is a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst. Okay. Because what we recognise is that we, we talked before that this reaction is very slow, okay? So so this um, acid perform, performs two functions. It speeds up um, speeds up the slow reaction, okay? So um, you know it might be take less than an hour as opposed to taking eight hours to occur. It speeds up the slow reaction, and what it also is is we say it's a dehydrating agent. That is the mechanism by way by by which the sulfuric acid does it is that it helps um, to remove um, the water more effectively, which okay so this then uh, drives the equilibrium 
towards the right hand side. Okay, so it means that by removing that water more effectively um, and taking it out so that then we can continue to drive the reaction to the right. Okay, so it makes it faster and it dehydrates it to make it more effective. Okay, so we always add a couple of drops of very concentrated sulfuric acid, you know, so it's somewhere around about 18 moles for every one litre in concentration. Super dangerous, so we only use a small amount of it. Um, so we need to take extra safety precautions when we use it. So, you know, we'd be using um, our personal protective equipment. We're using small amounts, um, you know, so a couple of drops. We're using droppers. Um, we're also probably carrying things out in a fume cupboard to minimise our exposure, okay? Because otherwise it will, it will give you a very nasty burn, okay? All right, so in this video, so we've talked through the, the chemistry of the esterification reaction. We've gone through the different uh, of the equipment that we use, looking at refluxing and why, so what the pieces are and why we do it from a chemical point of view. We've also talked about um, why, um, so the fact that we use a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst um, and the reasons why for that, as well as then some of the safety precautions we need to take. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.